how to get red lights how to change the background color of your slide how to change the slide size what are the most used shortcuts how to align and format well if you have been struggling with these questions in powerpoint then this video is just for you i have picked up seven most asked questions during my workshop in my youtube comments and even on my instagram page and today i'm going to answer all those questions in this video well if you enjoy this video do like share and subscribe now without any further delay let's begin how to get grid line so let me show you how to get grid lines and what is the use of grid lines so these lines that you see right now are basically called grid lines and in order to get these all you have to do is go on your view tab right here and tick mark this thing so for example if i'm unticking this you will see that it has gotten blank now this is how it looks like right the moment you tick mark the grid line box you will see these grid lines now what is the usage of it well honestly earlier there were more usages since you know powerpoint has been updating it is adding a lot of features so earlier in order to align things we actually used grid lines so to match that okay this circle has to come till this line also if you are trying to zoom in certain thing for example if you have to put an image over here how do you know which how much is the slide area for example if i'm adding this image and i have to make sure that i want certain part so you, with the grid line you will be able to see that this is my image area the one that basically has grid lines so when you zoom in you will see that only that particular part gets highlighted so these are some of the usages otherwise you can use grid line in multiple manner but most of the time the question that i get asked is how to get grid line so it's very simple go to your view tab and tick mark the grid line box if you want to take it you will get rid of those if moving on to the second most asked question in powerpoint how to change color of the background now let me quickly show you how we can do that it's a very very easy and simple trick all you have to do is now right now i have blank white slide right click format background just click on this tab that you see format background and you will see a new tab opening on the right side which has solid fill gradient fill picture pattern fill right so as the first name suggests solid fill which means you can fill in any solid color so click on the color tab over here and choose the color that you want in the background so it could be blue if you want to go for purple you can choose that if you want to go for orange so you can pick and choose any color from this tab now you can also create a gradient in the background so all you have to do is click on gradient fill so right now it has picked up a preset gradient all you have to do is decide so right now these four tabs that you see are four colors you can actually choose your own color for gradient if you want to see how to create gradient in detail check out my video on gradient i am putting the link in the description box but just to quickly show you i'm choosing three different colors to create my own gradient i have taken a yellow i have taken an orange and i'm going to take a deeper orange so i have created my own gradient in less than 1 minute you can also decide how much area do you want to give to yellow orange or the darker orange by just moving the tabs now the third option picture is as the name suggests you can actually insert a picture in the background pattern fill is basically these prefix pattern that are there you would actually use a pattern like this and you can change the colors for example if you want more of gray you can choose that if you want a dotted one if you want lines if you want these sort of patterns so all these are for you to choose based is your own choices and the kind of presentation you are making so that's how you actually can fill colors and patterns in the background moving on to the third question how to basically put picture in a shape or how to crop a picture to a shape so i'm going to show you a very very easy and simple method of how to do that now let's get a picture over here that we want to put into a shape i'm getting this image and i'm going to make three four copies of it all right so this is shape 2 this is so this is my second image and this is my third image let's reduce the size a little perfect now in order to put this into a shape all i have to do is double click on this go to crop 
over here instead of clicking on crop i'm going to click on this arrow that you see at the bottom the moment you click on it you will see the option of crop to shape and the moment you come on crop to shape you will see all the shapes that powerpoint offers so choose whichever shape you want to crop it to for example if i want to crop it to this shape and in less than 30 seconds my image has been inserted into a shape or my my actually image has been cropped to a shape now let's try another one crop to shape let's go for a simple circle but as you see this looks more like an oval shape than circle right in order to make sure it looks like a proper circle go to aspect ratio and choose 1 is to 1 so aspect ratio of shapes like circle and squares which have equal number of sides or radius the aspect ratio always should be 1 is to 1 now let's try one more crop to shape and let's go for something like this if you want to try one more example you can do that i'm going to copy the same shape you can actually change it from here also so even if you have put another shape you can go over here and choose this now this again does not look right in terms of the aspect ratio so i'm going to click on the arrow once again aspect ratio and 1 is to 1 and now i have got perfect four different images in four different shapes how easy and simple is that and imagine the kind of slides you can actually create using this so if for example if i have to create a slide i can actually just do this i can put my image like this and my content can come over here or i can also use this sort of a shape to put my image and i can place my text over here so you can use any of these shapes to create your own layouts and slides coming to the fourth most asked question how to align and format using simple commands So a lot of people ask me what is that one thing that we should learn in PowerPoint to make sure that we create clean and neat presentation and I always say that alignment distancing and formatting is what you should be aiming for So in order to do it in a very simple manner I'm going to show you a couple of examples So if you look at this slide you will see all these boxes are neatly aligned like the distance between them is equal and they are properly top aligned but when you're aligning them manually it gets difficult to align them properly right especially the distances etc so i'm going to show you one simple command of how to do this so these have to be aligned in a horizontal manner right which means left to right so decide the the most left and most right location of the two shapes that you want and now choose all the elements together go to shape format align i would want them to align middle first which means they all will come in one line so one job is done the second job is to make sure the distance between them is equal so i'm going to go to align again and distribute horizontally and within one simple command i have aligned the shapes in less than 30 seconds now what if i have to align the icons along with them just like this well if i use the same trick which means i get the most left and most right element right and if i choose all the elements go to shape format align align middle and align distribute horizontally do i get the desired result well i don't because right now it's picking and taking icons also as separate elements which you do not want so what you're going to do is you can actually first fix the icons inside the box for this also you could use the technique of alignment so whenever you are aligning two things one between the other you can use the alignment tool so go to align align center and align middle and now i'm going to group them together by using the shortcut control g because i want them to be like one unit right I'm going to do the same thing with the second one align center align middle control g to group it choosing both the elements align center align middle control g to group them next one align center align middle control g to group them moving on to the next one align center align middle control g second last align center 
align middle and control G. Moving on to the last one, align center, align middle and control G. Now all these are grouped elements which means it will consider the box as the shape and not the icons. Now I've selected all, I'm going to go to align, align middle, align distribute horizontally. And simply like that you can align your slides very very easily and simply. Moving on to the fifth most asked question. How to change the slide size from 4 is to 3 to 16 is to 9 or vice versa or how to make your document or your slide size portrait from landscape. Let me show you how to do that. So all you need to do is go to the design tab which is next to draw and transition. The moment you click on design you will see this tab which says slide size. Click on this, it will give you two options, 4 is to 3 or 16 is to 9. So right now as you see my slide size is 16 is to 9. If I want to make this to 4 is to 3, all I have to do is just click on this. Whether you want to maximize or ensure fit, I'm going to do maximize. And as you can see, my slide size has been changed to 4 is to 3. I'm going to do Ctrl Z because I want to keep using 16 is to 9 ratio. Now what if you want to make it portrait? Just click on this arrow that you see and do custom slide size. This will give you option of actually customizing the size as per your own convenience and choices which means you can actually put the width and height yourself or if you just want it to be portrait from landscape all you need to do is click on portrait here and do ok. And you will see that your document has been converted into a portrait one instead of a landscape one. So it's as simple as that. I'm going to quickly repeat this one. Go on design tab, click on slide size, change the ratio from 16 is to 9 to 4 is to 3 and vice versa from here. Or you can click on custom slide size and change from landscape to portrait by simple click and clicking on OK. I hope that was simple to understand. So now coming on to the sixth most asked question, how to place logo on all the slides at the same place? So what happens when we manually put a logo on different slides and you know even if we copy it some, so sometimes the, the placement of the logo is not same on all the slides and when you are especially showing it on a full screen you can see the logo moving a little here and there which does not look nice and it can distract the audience. So I'm going to show you a very very simple trick using Slide Master which can help you place logo on all the slides in one go at the same location. All you need to do is click on the view tab that you see over here and you will find this particular option called Slide Master. So the moment you click on it, it will open the master for you which means when you actually come over here and you right click, you will see these layouts, right, which are pre-made. So all these layouts are actually in Slide Master. So click on View and Slide Master. Now, if you want to insert a logo, so I'm going to place it on the first master. So click on Insert, Picture, choose the logo that you want to insert. So if this is my logo and I'm going to insert it over here. You will see the moment I have inserted it on first slide, it has come on all the slides, the remaining one, right? So that's my master one. Now this is master two. If I want it to be on all the slides completely, I will have to copy it and put it on the second master slide as well. So it depends on how many masters do you have. If you want it on all the slides, put it on all the masters. And now you can just close the master view. So you can see the logo appearing on all my blank slides. So no matter which layout I choose, even if I choose this, you will see the logo over here. If I choose another one, you will see the logo over here. So this makes sure that your logo placement is consistent and there is no discrepancy in that. So I'm going to do Ctrl Z to remove the logo right now. Moving on to the last most asked question. What are the most used PowerPoint shortcuts which can make our life easier and save time? I'm going to show you 5 shortcuts that I use the most in my PowerPoint presentation and I'm sure these are going to help you save a lot of time. First shortcut, how to group and ungroup. So if these are two elements that you have to group, all you have to do, so one way is obviously you can choose both right click and group, but if you have to use a shortcut, choose both 
and just do control G. So that will actually group the items together. If, if you want to ungroup it, all you have to do is press control shift and G and you will end up ungrouping both the items. Let's see it once again. So these are two separate items right now. I'm going to choose both. Control G to group the items. To ungroup it, you have to press Control Shift and G. So that's how you can use this amazing shortcut which will help you every day in your presentation. Moving on to the second shortcut that I use a lot, which is aligning text using shortcuts. So these are very, very simple and easy to remember shortcuts. So generally, if you have to do it manually, you end up using these tabs to left align, right align, center align or justify. So control L is for left align, control R is for right align, control E is for center align and control J is for justify. I'm going to quickly show this once again. Control L for left align, control R for right align, control E for center align and control J for justify. Imagine how simple and easy is that. You can actually take a screenshot of this as well so that you can use it in your everyday presentation. Moving on to the next shortcut, how to change size of your shapes without using your mouse or without using any other thing. So this is again a very, very simple and easy to use shortcut. All you have to do is click on shift and press the arrow keys. So I'm using the upper arrow to increase the size in terms of the height. In order to increase the size of the shape from left to right, I'm using the right arrow to reduce, I'm using the left to reduce the height, you can use the bottom arrow. So play with it, check out all the arrows and see what it does for you. You can increase, decrease size as per your own convenience by using these simple keys. Moving on to the next shortcut, how to change the font size. Again, this is something we end up using a lot, so generally if you have to do it, you you click on the text and you use these two keys to increase the size or you actually manually insert the size over here. In this case, you can use your keys to change the size. Press shift and control and use your greater than less than keys to increase or decrease the size. So if I want this to be very small, I can use the lesser than key. If I want it to be very big, I can use the greater than key. So it's very, very simple and easy to use. And again, it saves a lot of Moving on to the last shortcut, which is how to open a new presentation. So even if right now, while I'm working on this deck, let's say I have to open a new PPT, you don't have to go to file, open and all of that. All you need to do is press Ctrl N and a new PPT will get opened right in front of you. It's as simple as that. I'm going to show this to you once again. To open a new presentation, all you have to do is press Ctrl and N and a brand new PPT will get opened right in front of you. Right now, I have picked up questions that have been asked again and again. If you have any more questions that you are facing every day in your presentation, do let me know and, and I'll make another video which will explain all the answers. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Power of PowerPoint with Shruti Sharma. If you have not subscribed so far, please consider subscribing. Do like and share my videos with your friends, your colleagues, your bosses, your subordinates, anyone who works on PowerPoint. I'll see you in the next video.